Learning is complete only when you learn something which is actually actionable. Yes, I'm referring to all other financial influencers out there. I'm referring to myself as well. Because whenever we teach you long-term investment and fundamental analysis, we always teach you financial statements, annual reports, financial ratios, PE ratio, debt to equity ratio, and whatnot. But who is teaching you something actionable? And that's exactly what we are going to do in today's video. Hi, you all. Welcome to the 20th episode of the complete learning series of Stock Market Investing and Learning. As always, I put all these learning videos into a series. Uh, the series is available in the playlist. The playlist is available here in the i button. Make sure you watch all the videos in the right order and learn really well. Let's all invest together and grow together. So over the last many videos, I, I'm uh, reading all of the comments. So the feel and the vibe I get it. Hey, Sharik, we have learned all this all good. We know how to analyze the profit and loss statement, balance sheet, cash flow statement. We know a lot about multiple financial ratios now, but how do we actually find good stocks to invest in? Because that is what is actionable, right? We can always have all this theoretical knowledge, but what is those steps with which we can actually find a good quality stock to invest in? So let us learn five steps that you have to follow. So basically with what all we have learned so far, I'm just putting a process to it. I'm just templatizing that so that we have five steps that you can follow each and every single time in order to find amazing good quality stocks to invest in. And guess what? In the five steps, the fourth step is valuation valuing a stock so along with the process that you have to follow in today's video we'll also be learning discounted cash flow analysis for valuing a stock also that is we'll be learning how to value a stock also in today's video so it's going to be a action-packed value-packed class as always so without further ado let's get right into it the name is Shark Chinsudin welcome to Market Feed. So yeah, the agenda of the video is super simple. Number one, it is to learn the five steps that you need to follow to pick good quality stocks every single time. And number two is to learn how to do valuation of a stock. Super important. So if you're excited, if you're interested, do mark your attendance in the comment section as you always do. And let's get started. Cool. So this is the car slide, how to find good quality stocks. So the let's quickly understand what these five steps are. The first step is to identify the stock itself. Now, how to identify the stock? We'll actually go to the next slide because each of the steps that you see here, each of them have a slide of their own. So we'll learn about how to identify a stock and how to do each of the step in depth going ahead. No worries. So the first step is identifying a stock. Second step is understanding the business of the company that you identified. Number three is ensuring quality. Ensuring that the company is actually of high quality, investable company. Number four is valuing the company, doing the valuation of the company. Yes, we will be learning that today. And number five is finally taking the decision whether to or not to invest into the company. Cool. Then let's move ahead. Let's go into individual slides and learn each step in detail. Okay, each step in detail. So the first step that we are doing is identifying a stock. So my point here is, first you should have a stock in your mind so that you can start learning about the stock. So as you know, there are thousands of stocks listed on either NSE or BSE. So which stock should you learn about? You should have a stock in your radar and then you decide, okay, this is a stock I'm going to learn about. So how do you even decide what that stock is, what that company is that you should learn more about? There are multiple ways of doing it, okay? So the first way of actually finding a good enough stock, which is worthy enough to study it about further. Yes, that's what we're doing, right? So the first step is basically your friends and social circle, right? So if you have a lot of Indians do not have that basically, right? A friend or a family circle, uh, which actually talks about stocks. But I'm sure you're part of multiple WhatsApp groups, Telegram groups, or multiple apps that discuss stocks today. So if you're there, you might see someone's talking highly about a stock, right? Someone's to uh, talking really good things about a stock. Then that has come into your circle, right? 
so maybe if you have a circle even on social media you might hear good things about multiple stocks no not all of those stocks down is what i'm saying cool number two is general observation see what is basically general observation so you can go around so you live your life right you go around you live your life so when you do that you might see that some brand or some uh, product or a service is doing really well and when that is doing really well you can actually find out if that stock is if that the stock of that company is listed in the stock market if that is the case then bring it into your circle of stocks that you have to study right I'll give you an example, a very famous example. I always keep uh, talking about this. So I think it was early in 2010s, uh, early 2010s uh, when Royal Enfield started becoming very popular in India, right? It became part of multiple movies, a lot of the youth really wanted a Royal Enfield bike. So uh, I think uh, the initial part of the last decade, 2010, 11, 12, 13. So it was an easy observation to make, right? But if someone acted or acted on it or not is a different discussion. But it was an easy enough observation at that point of time. You could see youth really making Royal Enfield an aspirational brand, pushing their parents to buy them one, making that money somehow to actually buy a Royal Enfield bike. So if you would have made that observation and seeing that, hey, the number of Royal Enfield bikes on the road is increasing, you could have bought its shares. At that point, uh, Aisher Motors is the parent company of Royal Enfield. It was listed back then. The price was nearly 3000 It has already given more than 10x returns over the last uh, 10 years. Think about that. You see, as here's a famous saying, if you would have invested 1,50,000 rupees into the share, rather than spending 1,50,000 for buying a bike, the bike would have gone into scrap now. Maybe, uh, no offense for that. But again, the stock, the 1,50,000, if invested into a stock, it would have become 15 lakhs or even uh, above that now. Anyways, so that's what general observation is. Keep your eyes open when you go into your supermarket or anywhere. See if some company is doing really well, right? Like Indigo did really well over the last one decade. If someone would have, someone who's traveling uh, via air multiple times, they would have easily noted that Indigo clearly is doing really well, uh, is clearly gaining a lot of market share. That's a general observation with which you can feel that, okay, this company, this stock is worthy enough of studying more. Again, reminding you that the first step identifying a stock is all about getting a stock into your watch list and getting a feel that, okay, this stock is worth learning more about. Cool. Number third method of finding or identifying a stock to bring it into your watch list is using stock screeners. I'll show you a simple screener here. Again, we did look into screener.in as a product, I think two, three videos before. So when you go into screener, they have something called screens here. See, screens. So th there are multiple preset screens built and using these screens you can actually find good quality companies or you can even create a screen of your own say you can give filters like okay i want a company which has a pe ratio of so much a pb ratio of so much and you can screen out stocks on your own otherwise a simple example is i'm just coming down here uh so these are some preset screens they have given so this is interesting right uh highest year on year quarterly profit growth Basically, they are they have put a filter of highest year on year quarterly profit growth and the, putting that filter on all the listed companies. So let's see what are the companies inside. We've got some names here, right? Some names we have got here. So just like that, you can try with multiple screens. They have a lot of screens available. So you can go through all these multiple screens. There are some really good ones as well, right? I'm just going into growth stocks. So they're also explaining what are the reasons or what are the filters that they've put here as well. So you can go into screens or you can create a screen of your own, which is filters of your own, and you can find companies. Good. Then you'll get companies which can be added onto your watch list, which should be studied further. Cool. Number four is new sectoral trends and rule changes. Now, again, this can also be a part of your general observation, right? So you're living in India, you know, there are a lot of things happening in the country as such and there are also regulatory changes which are happening a simple example here is the sectoral trend of electric vehicles we clearly know right electric vehicles are definitely taking over and they're going to be the future for sure so when that is happening when you actually see that sectoral trend then why not go with that and see which company is doing uh, good there which can uh, which companies can do good there and then bring those companies in your watch list Finally, the fifth point of doing this is your circle of competence. Because each of us have our own circle of competence. I'll give you an example here, right? Someone of you who is watching might be working in, a, in the IT industry. Cool? 
working in the IT industry. So since you're working in the IT industry and if you understand the business model of the IT company in which you're working, then you would be a better judge of knowing which IT company is upcoming and doing well and can do good compared to a doctor among the viewers watching this video. Correct. And for the doctor, maybe his circle of competence is probably healthcare companies or pharma companies. The doctor can have maybe some insider information or some more information regarding the business model of pharma companies and also more insights as to which pharma company is good or bad and all of those things. So the point here, here is each of us have our own circle of competence and with that circle of competence, we can again come to know that, okay, this company in this particular sector, which is in my circle of competence, is doing well and can do good. Then bring that company in your watch list which is identifying a stock, right? So I hope the first point is very clear. This is based using all these five methods. It's not necessarily that you use these five uh, uh, methods, but again, it just happens that you eventually will have a list of stocks that you feel that, okay, these are good enough to be studied further. Cool? That is the first step. Now you have a list of stocks which you should study further. Then let's start studying. Cool. So the next step in order to find out really good quality stocks is understanding the business of and the actual business of the company. So you have multiple stocks in your watch list. Take each of them and understand everything about their, their business, the business model, what they do, what they've been doing, what the uh, future plans are, what is their growth strategy, how are they actually making money, right? everything related to how they are operating their core business, right? So for this, the first way of doing this by basically reading their annual report, you can also do this by gathering data from media reports and interviews. I love this. I absolutely love this. I select a company. If I kind of like it, I do research by listening to their founders, management's interviews, like on Money Control, C uh, CNBs, you know, they keep giving interviews. I keep listening to their interviews. It talks a lot about them and they'll have written interviews written articles about them, I read that also. Because a lot of things which are not on the annual report can also be found in these articles and interviews. Number three is learn everything you can about the company, business, competitors and the mod. Mod, we have already learned what mod is, right? I'll give the link to the video where we've discussed what mod is. Anyway, so understanding the business, as I said, is understanding everything about the business. If you have the slightest of doubt as to what is this company actually doing, then consider not investing into the company. Cool. So I'll, I'll show you some things, right? Some things, some questions that you can actually ask yourselves. So when you uh, uh, ask these questions regarding a company, you're eventually figuring out its business. For example, right? what does the company do? Basic business industry. So I'm just giving this as a checklist. Ask these questions to each of the company that you have selected. And when you answer these questions, each of these questions, you'll eventually uh, end up with having good enough information regarding the company. Uh, let's take another example, right? How many employees for the company? Any labor issues? See, we are even going that deep to understand if there are any labor issues to the company. What, is, what else is here? What do they manufacture? What are the raw materials used? See, when you get into stuff like that, maybe you'll find out that, okay, the company has a... Uh, is using raw material which is basically being imported from another company and there is a huge dependency on one country or one company in another country which is not really good for a company right understand the depth in which you have to go so these are just a few checklist questions i have given you at least try answering all these questions for each company that you select you will go a long way and when you do that i'm sure your number of questions which you ask now would increase. Don't get stuck only in so many questions. You'll come up with even more questions, get into the depth of the matter and you'll start understanding or you will understand everything about the business. You understand, right? The depth when I mentioned, right? Raw materials, we're not just writing that, okay, they use copper or coal or whatever. You're even going into where it is coming from. Are there any uh, legal statutory compliance issues there? Understand every single thing. Moving ahead. So now what? Just refreshing here, right? So you had, there are thousands of companies avail available out there. Then out of those, you made a watch list of few stocks because you identified them uh, via multiple steps. And each of the stock you take out and you now understood everything that is regarding their business. Their business. That is where the next step is. Now you understand the business of the company. Now you have to ensure that business is good, but they are doing the business in good quality. Understood? No. Maybe a company has good 
good business model. They are doing well in terms of the business model. You understand everything. But maybe they are not being run well. There is a lot of debt. Profit is not growing. Revenue isn't that much. Revenue is actually moving down over the years. Uh, the debt is so high that uh, the company is struggling. See, quality of a company is what we are going to understand in the third step, which is ensuring quality. How can you do this? Very simple. No, again, reading annual reports. More importantly, reading and number crunching in financial statements. Go through its balance sheet, PL statement, and cash flow statement and understand what the company is going through. And finally, study financial ratio so that you can actually know if the company is doing well or not. So please, please, please watch our uh, financial ratios video if you haven't. Uh, I'm again giving the links here. So in the financial ratios video, we learned about, I think, what, some 15, 20 financial ratios. And each of the financial ratio, we even learned that financial ratio being high is good for the company or being low is good for the company. So if you learn that already, then apply that to the company that you're learning and you'll understand what the company is going through and if the company is good or not. Now, just like we did for understanding business of the company, I gave you a checklist, right? I'll give you a checklist here also. No, I'm not going to go through each and every line item here, just like I did for understanding business also. You can maybe pause the video here. You can read all of these yourselves. There is one more slide, okay? One, two, three. Yes. So this is the next slide here. So there are more line items I've given here. So you can go through all of this. Now, don't think that when we are ensuring quality of the company, we are only talking about numbers. We are talking about qualitative factors, not just quantitative factors, right? For example, see, we are even looking into subsidiary. I'm just randomly taking an example so that we can understand. See, subsidiary. So it is always good for the company not to have a lot of subsidiaries. Cool. So, uh, comment is not many. So, for smaller companies, too many subsidiaries could signal companies siphoning of money. Can happen, right? And then, um, let me see if uh, the point I'm going to say is here or not. It's not here. So, my point is there are multiple line items I've given as example only. I cannot give everything here. So, another example which is not here is maybe you can look into promoter shareholding. If the promoter shareholding is decreasing rapidly over the years, it is not a good qualitatively qualitative quality indicating factor for the company, right? Again, another quality factor that you can look into. Other simple things are gross profit margin. You learned about this. So that if it is growing above 20%, it's amazing. Then stuff that you know, right? Return on equity. If that is above 25%, amazing. So we haven't even measured ROCE, ROA and all uh, on this sheet. So these are just examples. You can read through it. You'll get a feel of, feel of a few examples with which we are ensuring quality of the company. Understood, no? So basically, by studying financial ratios, studying annual report, financial statements, you're ensuring the company is good enough or not. So all of these examples, you can do. you can look into the debt, the interest payment per month. If the, is the revenue coming in is actually taking care of the interest payment, at least all of those things, all single thing you can ensure. Now that you have understood about the business, you're ensuring that the business is good enough, the quality is good enough. Now, again, you might be a bit scared or intimidated after hearing this one, but take this from me. Because investing is a craft, valuation is a craft, ensuring quality is a craft, and a craft gets better when you put more time into it. When you start off, you wouldn't be great. Let's talk about, let's take driving or cooking as an example. So when you start learning cooking or driving, obviously you'll be bad, but when you do it for some period of time, you'll get better, right? So just like that, you give this time. The first time wouldn't be great. The 10th time would also be not great. But if you do this for a long enough period of time, I'm sure you would get really good at it, right? It is a self-discovery journey itself. You'll definitely get better. So what has happened so far? We shortlisted a few companies. We understood their business. And now finally, we're filtering down now. Now we have few companies which we feel have good quality businesses as well. Cool. Then what is the next step? It's valuation. Now, what is the valuation of a company? See, current market capitalization, that is the market valuation of the company. C share price into total number of share uh, number of shares available is the market cap or market capitalization of the company, or it could also be called the market valuation of the company. That is how the market is valuing the company. But Market valuation is one thing. Every company will have a true inner valuation as well. 
which is called the intrinsic value of the company as well. Cool? Understand that there is market's valuation of a company and there is intrinsic valuation as well. But before we get more deep into valuation of a company, we have to understand, we've already learned this, that there are two schools of thoughts when it comes to investments long-term investments. We've already learned it in a video. Again, I'll, link, I'll give the link to the video here, but let's quickly go through it, right? There are two schools of thoughts when it comes to long-term investing. Number one is growth investing and number two is value investing. What is growth investing? Growth investing says that buy a stock if the stock has high growth history or high growth potential and fits all your checklist. That is, the company has fit, fit all your checklists, it has, it has ensured quality as well, and it has been growing well over the last many years, and it has a potential, you feel that it has a potential to grow well over the last coming many years as well. If that is the case, buy the stock. So when we say it has been growing over the last many years, what should be growing? Its revenue should be growing, its net profit or uh, net income or its profit should be growing, the stock price itself should be growing. If all of those are growing over the last many years and you feel that they can grow over the many year, uh, coming many years, that is growth investing by then and there, right? There are many famous investors have, uh, out there who have been doing uh, growth investing and who have amassed the fortune of wealth by doing growth investing alone. It's not necessary that everyone has to run behind value investing, which is a bit too uh, hyped up as of now, I would say. Cool? I hope you understand. I'll give you an uh, example of growth investing, right? Let's talk about a uh, growth company like Hindustan Unilever. You can see the charts here, right? So if you look into Hindustan Unilever, historically, it has always been highly valued. Its P.E. ratio has always been above what, 60, 70, 80 and even touching 100, I guess. So it's always been overvalued, but the company has been growing ever since. It's revenue every year, it's a net profit every year. Everything is only growing, growing, growing every year. And its stock price is also growing, 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 growing every year. So if you actually value the stock, the stock is always overvalued. But still, if you in, if you would have invested into Hindustan Unilever at any point of time, you would have made money, right? In the long term, obviously. So that is what is growth investing. Is it is a growing stock. It is valued high. But I'm going to invest because all I want is profit in the long term. Cool? I hope that is understood. Now let's come to value investing. Now value investing for the reason that the largest investor ever, Warren Buffett, stands for it. Warren Buffett's uh, mentor, uh, uh, Sir Benjamin Graham, even he popularized it. For that reason, all of the people on social media, all aspiring uh, investors, they're like, okay, I also want to become a value investor. That is the best thing available out there. Maybe it's cool, it's absolutely okay, but when we overhype, over glorify value investing, let me just say that growth investing is not bad as well. Growth investing is easy. Right? Where value investing is hard, but value investing, if done right, can build fortune for you. That's So let's start understanding what value investing is. So value investing says that buy a stock if the current market price of the stock is lower than its true intrinsic value. Got it? We we'll discussed about this, right? A stock or a company has a market valuation and its intrinsic true valuation. How is intrinsic valuation uh, value calculated? We'll come to that, no worries, okay? So basically, intrinsic value means what it is true, truly valued based on all its revenues, future potential, what should be its true valuation? But because we know market is market, almost all stocks trade or uh, trade at a premium. But there are a few stocks which are hidden where they're not trading at a premium. Their market price is actually below its true intrinsic value. If that is a ca case, it is a steel deal, right? Buy the stock is what value investing says. In growth investing, stocks are trading at a premium than the intrinsic value, but still growth investing says that by the stock. But in, in uh, value investing, the current market price or current market valuation should be below the intrinsic valuation, then only by the stock. Cool. Now your question would be, okay, maybe a lot of you are in interested in value investing. How do we find out the intrinsic value? Only if you find out the intrinsic value of the company, only then we can uh, know uh, if it is investable or not. Then let's learn that now. Now, when I say that I'm going to teach you how to find the intrinsic value of the company now in the next 5-10 minutes, I know it is a tall claim. Because valuation, valuing a company is a 
I don't know how to put words to it. It is such a complex, deep thing to do. I mean, investment banks put together a team sitting together for multiple days to value companies. And I'm saying that I'm going to teach you how to do that in five minutes so that you can do just like this. So I know it is a tall claim, but how we are going to do it today is a very simple way of doing it. Now, the very famous way of valuing a company, it is called discounted cash flow analysis, DCF valuation discounted cash flow we are going to learn the same thing only but i'm not going to into the depth of it i'm going not going to teach you exactly what dcfs exactly how to calculate and all of those uh, we have a simple calculator we'll go into the calculator i'll tell you what all you need to input so that you can find the true intrinsic valuation of a company as per discounted cash flow valuation let's do that and now uh, the long term investment masterclass videos are faring so 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 down the line, maybe after some time, if this video crosses 1 lakh views, I will do deep, complicated videos as to how to value companies. There are multiple models available. There are great logics available. We'll do videos uh, regarding that. But what's that milestone is cursed? Cool. So in order to find the true intrinsic value of a company using discounted cash flow analysis method, let's take Hindustan Unilever itself as an example. We just spoke about it. What did we speak? We spoke that it is a high growth company because it's a high, go high growth company. It is current, its current market value valuation and its current share price would be much higher than its true intrinsic price. So then let's actually go and find its true intrinsic value do using discounted cash flow analysis. And then let's find out what its true intrinsic value and true intrinsic share prices. Cool. Now again, I'm going to show you a discounted cash flow analysis calculator now. A very simple calculation, a calculator. But let me speak about this as well, right? Valuation again is a craft. Valuation of a company hugely depends on who is valuating the company. Because I can say, because I, there are multiple entry, entries that you have to fill in when you are, are doing DCF analysis. And when you are putting in those entries, it is subjective. Uh, uh, an example question would be, uh, the DCF calculator would ask you, how much are you expecting the company to grow in the next five years? Now, it's a subjective answer. I might say that the company will grow 10% every year the next five years. And you might feel that, oh, no, no, this company might only grow 3% uh, every year for the next five years. Right. So, depending on what answer you are putting in, the DCF uh, analysis-based valuation would change. Cool. So, valuation is, is a craft in itself. So, yeah, we are coming to Phenology's website. Pranjal Kamra uh, has built a good uh, DCF calculator here, right? So, let's, it's very simple asking very few questions. We just have to fill those in. So, I've taken Hindustan Unilever as an example here. So, the initial FCF, what is FCF? Free cash flow. We've learned, right? If not learned, go to the cash flow statement analysis video here. We have in-depth learned what uh, free cash flow is. So here, you, what you can do is you can take, see, the tooltip is saying, no, take three years average free cash flow. That's what I did. I went, I went into the cash flow statement of uh, Hindustan Unilever. I took last three years free cash flow. I took the average of it. Cool. And that is what I got. 6,635 crores. Now, discount rate. Now, discount rate, you can read the tooltip. No, discount rate is simply the individual investor's required rate of return. That is, if you're not investing into the stock, this money, what are you kind of expecting? What returns are you expecting? I, I simply wrote 10%. Okay, 10% is what I'm expecting here. I'll just put it in again. Yeah, 10%, right? So, the next question is growth rate 1 to 5 years. That is... In the next five years, at what percentage growth are you expecting the company to grow? And Hindustan Unilever, I think, is already a big enough comp company. I think it can grow 10% every year for the next five years. Again, very subjective. I think so. So if you think something else, you can select 5%, 15%, or you can select custom. And you can put in that number like 6.7% if you feel so. right? But I'll grow, uh, go with 10%. right? Just an example. right? We're just learning this. Uh, then... In the next five years, that is from year 6 to year 10, every year, what percentage growth are you expecting? I have selected 5% every single year. Cool. Now, the next question is terminal rate. Terminal rate is basically, yeah, you can read it here, no? Perpetual growth rate beyond the forecast period. That is after 10 years. What, at what rate do you expect the company to grow every year? 
Now, minimum a company has to do at least 4 5%. So, I put in 5% there. So, you can mostly put for any companies 5% or below is a good terminal rate to put in. Very practical. Now, 5 or below you can put in. Right? So, here we are putting in 5%. The next question, question is market capitalization. Very simple. You can easily find it out from ticker tape or for, from screener. It is all up to you. Now, Hindustan Unilever has 6,29,514 crore rupees as market capitalization. Everything you have to put in in, in crores. Cool. The next is current share price of Hindustan Unilever. I put in 2702. The next is net debt of the company. What is net debt? It is total debt minus cash and cash equivalents. Yeah, I went into the uh, p &L statement balance sheet and I found out this balance sheet to find out this and I put in. It is minus 2800. Anyways, I put in that, right? So debt was so much and cash and cash equivalent so very high. So it came out to be a negative number. The next one is margin of safety. Now, this is just a percentage uh, that is taken as a margin of safety. You can simply put in 10, right? Uh, so if the... Uh, BCF based intrinsic value per share of, uh, came out to be at 1000 rupees, 10% margin of safety means it would be shown as 900. So this is basically taken for the safety of calculation only. So we can put in 10% only, which is absolutely fine. I'm clicking on calculate DCF. Ta-da, it has come here. What is it? DCF value per share, intrinsic value per share, as per whatever numbers we have given here is 752 rupees. Now, just I'm adding something here, right? The growth rate for the next five years, you can actually what do is, you, you can look into the growth rate of maybe revenue or net profit over the last five years. And you can see if the last five years, the if the profit actually grew by uh, 12, 13 percentage every year, maybe you can select the same itself for the next five years. So it's all up to you. Anyways, based on whatever numbers we have given here, the intrinsic value as per DCF per share is 752 rupees. Now the fair value after MOS, MOS is nothing but margin of safety. We have taken 10 percentage, right? They're already subtracting 10 percentage and it is saying 677 rupees. What is the current market price? 2,702 and the intrinsic value is only 752. 752 intrinsic value, current market price of 2700. So it is clearly trading at a premium. But it is okay because it is a growth company. It is not necessary because if you go back, it is a, uh, if you are investing into Hindustan Unilever, you are basically following the growth investing school of thought and you do not actually give a damn about that intrinsic value. But yeah, that is the large pursuit, right? And that's exactly what I meant when I say if you are going via the value investing road, it is not easy. It is going to take a lot of time, a lot of uh, crunching numbers, reading annual reports, taking those numbers, doing DCF analysis, maybe not like in a very simple method like this, maybe doing deep uh, DCF analysis and finding that simple gem of an investment opportunity via value investing. Maybe not worth your time also, I might say. But again, if you can do that, you're unlocking your pot of gold, as Kunal Shah says. It's all up to you. Now, I hope you have an understanding of this fourth slide which is valuation if you're doing value investing only you need to value stocks if you're going via growth investing then you can skip that then we come to the fifth and the final step which is the decision making step right now you have done so far now you have to uh, finally take the decision as to invest into the stock right so when you take the decision okay now you decided okay i want to invest into the stock that you have already done based on the previous four steps now the question is when and how to invest money into the stock. Now, we have already covered about this in a previous video, uh, video, right? When to invest into a stock. So again, multiple people uh, follow multiple methods. One is lump sum way of investing. I've seen a lot of people, they have a lot of money with them, put all of the money into a stock when they think the stock is good. That is a lump sum mode of investment. Number two is SIP mode of investment, which means that you keep investing into the stock in a uh, across a period of time, maybe every month once you, you might invest or as per some technical analysis criteria, you will invest in tranches. So when you are investing in tranches, you are investing or buying the stock at high prices, at low prices over a period of time, which is also really good. So it's normally said that maybe you start with a lump sum investment, but also make sure that you regularly keep investing into the stock as well so that you keep averaging your uh, price of the stock. Cool. Anyway, so now you've taken a decision as to buy the stock. Uh, again, let's just read through it. When you're doing growth investing, try to invest when the stock price is at a dip. Use technical analysis to time the dip. Which means that, say you did your analysis, you uh, 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 understood the business, you did your, your quality checks and everything. You like a stock. 
Don't just go and invest into the stock today. Open the chart of the stock. Look into it. Do some technical analysis and figure out if the stock technically is at a high or a low. Make sure when you buy, when you put in money, it is at a low. What is this? We haven't learned technical analysis, right? No worries. Going ahead, we will learn technical analysis. We learn to find out dips in stocks. So uh, maybe that's a good thing that you can do if you're so serious about investing. Uh, try, try to time a bit, right? Rather than just investing blindly, look into the charts and try to find a dip and put money there. Even if you're doing lump sum or SIP, try to invest in dips, right? Or just re uh, invest regularly in fixed time periods if you're lazy. Cool. Now, if you're doing value investing, buy if the current market price of the stock is lower than its interest value. If you find that uh, golden opportunity, I don't think you need to wait more. Yes, you can still look into the charts. Maybe it is still moving down. It has broken a support, which is a price action based term. If it is broken a support, maybe you can wait a bit more. Maybe the stock is going even further down uh, from its interest value. Maybe you can wait and uh, buy. But again, uh, when you're doing value investing, the larger point is you buy below its interest value, then you are in for a good right right good investment opportunity i think that said so this video was all about putting all what we learned over the last many videos and making them actionable no, it's actionable, right? I'm putting all the relevant links in the description and the pinned comment to the DCF calculator, to the screener, a website and whatnot. So one ask from you is, try doing this, no? Try, try creating that first watch list. Maybe you, were, you might identify five stocks, right? Following any of this, following any of these five, you try at least getting five stock names. Then understand the business of each of these five stocks. Then ensure quality for each of these five stocks. And then reach a decision as to whether to invest or not. Cool? Now let's do it. Moving ahead, more and more important things are coming your way. Today we learn how to pick and identify and invest into a good quality stock. In next video, we'll talk about how to create amazing stock portfolio for yourselves what all to take care what all to uh, ensure when you're creating a long-term investment portfolio what is a portfolio basket of stocks for yourself right so meet you then so that's it in this video if you like the video make sure you smash that like button jump into the comment section ask questions share the video with your friends and family invite them to join the community subscribe to the channel if you haven't and enable the bell icon also if you have it so yeah that is it from my side for this video as always, let's learn, invest, trade, and grow together. See you in the next class. Bye-bye.